Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about Cisco's unified border element and the new licensing model. There's a couple new SKUs, there's a bunch of SKUs that are going away. I want to show you the differences in these new SKUs and talk about the features that they enable. Let's dive into CCW and check out the SKUs, and as we go through that, I'll talk about the actual functionality as well. To best explain the new unified communications licensing model for Cube, I figured why not configure a unified communications oriented router. In this case, I have a C1-4331 system here that uh, I am configuring. As you can see, I've selected the Unified Communications option under iOS Feature Licenses. Up to that point, that's probably what you would expect to see. But then I have my options broken out on the right-hand side here. As you can see, there's CME, SRST, stuff we're used to seeing, and then there's the Cube option. And there's also a Classic Cube option. Now, Classic Cube is the way that you've ordered licenses in the past. These are just blanket licenses, and they come in either 5s, 25s, or 100 packs. In the new model, you'll notice that we actually get to key in the quantity, uh, and the price is per license. Now, we need to understand what each of these licenses does, uh, and I will actually step you through that right now. So first of all, cube-t you can think of as cube trunking or a trunk license. This is one trunk session license and this is what you would use when interfacing with a service provider, right? Perhaps you have a service provider who has um, offered you a SIP trunk of uh, 100 active calls. You would get 100 active sessions in this cube license. So cube-t standard basically. Uh, type in your quantity and away you go. You'll notice that the price here is actually also substantially uh, decreased. It's $95 per session, whereas in the old model, if we look at um, the five count, it's $750. So if you do the math, um, you do save a good chunk of money in that uh, alone. So jumping back to the cube options, if you say, hey, I need double box redundancy, right? So if you're buying two platforms, you can actually use the cube-t red license, which is the redundant license. Uh, in this case, it's the same thing. Type in your quantity and away you go. Now, because it's redundant, you're using two boxes. The price is a little bit more. Uh, again, this is list price, uh, but you already expected that, right? Now, the next licenses are where things get a little bit more complicated. The cube-l-red and cube-l-standard are the line side licenses. Now, as you can see on screen here, I have a diagram of when you would use this. This is kind of, um, you know, a little bit of a, of a reverse of what you're used to seeing, and that is that, um, Typically, you know, a service provider is offering us a SIP trunk. We have a PBX on-premise, you know, Cisco Unified Communications Manager or otherwise, and our phones are directly registered to the Unified Communications Manager or the on-premise PBX. In this case, the line side or line session license is actually going to allow the phones to register through the cube out to the cloud service. Uh, and again, you can see that in the diagram here. So uh, the intelligence is in the cloud. You just need a secure gateway to get those devices from your premise to the cloud. So that is what these licenses are for. Uh, and you can do, again, these both in a redundant fashion or an individual fashion, as you may be familiar with from the past. Last but not least, we have the Cube Media Proxy license, and this is redundant by default. This license, uh, as you can see in the diagram on screen, this is for a new feature that essentially allows Cube to be used as a media proxy. And what this is for is if you have multiple recording points. So currently, Cube network-based recording only allows you to fork the call to a single recording service. Uh, in this instance, you would, uh, or in the diagram here, you would actually fork the call at the gateway at a device that's licensed with the cube-t licenses. Uh, you would fork that both to the endpoint and, and 
obviously to the cube uh, media proxy and then the media proxy can break that out into multiple recording services. Now it's worth mentioning you do have to have a separate box for this because it is process intensive but uh, but yeah there you can see it in the diagram that is what this license is for. Now you would be again using a box that is dedicated to this uh, and likewise you would be licensing you know per session so if your trunk gateway services you know 5,000 calls but there's only you know 250 of those that actually you know recording applies to you know you can license your media proxy device appropriately so anyway i hope that's been a helpful introduction to the new licensing model uh, as i get some additional information i'm going to try and add it to the comments section below be sure to subscribe to come back for future updates we'll see you again soon thanks for watching